Hey guys, welcome back to the homestead. Today I'm inside. We're gonna be doing a little bit of pruning of some of the plants that I have inside that I bring in to overwinter. I have some bananas, a lemon plant, an eggplant, a pepper, and a few more bits and bobs that I bring in to keep them inside from the cold. So we're gonna prune all of those today, but I'm also gonna talk to you guys a little bit about just some topics that's been in my head that I really wanted to get off my chest. So let's get started. All right guys, so I have a couple of bananas here. This is the big banana. It's the original banana plant that I actually bought from the store. This one beside it was a baby, a little pup that it put out last year. Um, and then I repotted it, so now I have two. It's actually trying to put out another little pup here, but it's kind of too chilly and just not enough bright light for it to actually develop right now. So bananas need to be pruned rather frequently because they're always putting out new leaves. So I'm just gonna prune off these leaves. I'm gonna start here with this one. And I'm just using a sharp scissors. You can use pruners. And then you can use these as just like uh, mulching in some of your gardens or just outside or throw it in your compost heap or whatnot. So while I'm doing this, I wanted to actually just talk to you guys about a few things that's been on my chest the past few days. Um, so there's this popular video that's been going around and it's about a Canadian farmer who claims that he's been um, forced to pour out all of his milk. Now, basically what he's saying in the video is that any excess milk that they get out of their cows, they have to dump it down the drain because there's an excess production. And the whole point is that if there's an excess in production of milk, it'll drive down the cost of milk. And so he's saying in, in the video that the government of Canada is forcing him to pour out all of the extra milk rather than put it in supply to reduce the cost of milk. So I was really interested in this because I've heard about this before when it came to um, maple syrup in Canada. We are the maple syrup production <laughs> hub. <laughs> We actually produce some of our own maple syrup here because we've got a lot of maple trees. But we know for a fact that the government or I guess the maple syrup uh, coalition uh, puts away a lot of maple syrup because that drives the cost of it up. Because if you keep um, only a limited supply in the supply chain, it actually makes the price of the maple syrup stay at a certain point because the people creating the maple syrup, bottling, packaging, and selling it all want to get a pretty big cut out of the maple syrup. So what they do is there's like huge warehouses full of bottles of maple syrup and they only put those into supply to keep it at a certain price point. They always have to make sure that they're hoarding back some of the goods that are released into supply. That's actually a huge topic when it comes to food and food production and distribution because a lot of foods, a lot of things in our society in general have this artificial scarcity um, label on them. And what I mean by that is we actually have an overproduction of most of our foods. Foods that we're normally uh, eating a lot of, we suddenly see that there's a scarcity or that there is a limited number of this certain food. The reason being is because the government or the coalitions that um, run that certain food item, they're the ones that are gatekeeping how much of that food is supplied to the public and how much of it is kept back in warehouses or in stockpiles. That way they can make sure that the price stays at a certain point and never dips down. Because if you have, let's say, an abundance of milk, which we do, and uh, every farmer is able to sell it directly to the consumer, the price of milk would be very, very low because Every farm that has cows and produces milk, they produce a lot of milk, like an abundance of milk. So in order for the farmers to make a lucrative living, they actually hoard or even throw away, completely just throw away the food um, to keep the price high so us consumers are paying a higher price, therefore they're getting more money whenever we make a purchase. So with the milk thing, I actually ended up looking into it. This sounds exactly like what they do with the maple syrup. They hoard it in these giant warehouses and it keeps the price of maple syrup so high. We're in Canada and we're spending like 10 to $12 for maybe like a small little jar of maple syrup. It's extremely expensive. And you would think because we are the number one producers of real authentic Canadian maple syrup that we have maple trees absolutely everywhere. We are covered in maple trees all over Canada. 
that it would be super cheap and super cost effective to buy maple syrup at the stores but it's not even really affordable and that's just because they keep the price high because they're always holding back whatever extra production extra production that they are able to produce now going back to that milk farmer which is really what I wanted to touch on today so I did a little bit more digging and I found out that it wasn't the government necessarily that was uh, making the milk farmers dump the extra milk. It really wasn't the government that was regulating the cost of the milk so much. I mean, they do obviously have a part to play in this because they're the ones enforcing the rules. But what that farmer didn't tell us though is that Dairy Farmers of Ontario, they are basically the coalition or the overseeing body that creates all of the rules and regulations when it comes to milk milk production and milk supply. They, they make us dump it. And no matter how we stand up, so this time I'm going public. I want the people to see the pain that us growers have. Dairy Farmers of Ontario, there's one um, that's Dairy Farmers of Canada as well. But the Dairy Farmers of Ontario, the very organization that he is part of, they're the ones that created the rules and the regulations for overproduction of milk. So him coming out and saying that the government is forcing him to throw that milk out is not quite true. Actually, he's part of the organization, which they all have to be a part of. Um, I think they have to pay like a yearly fee to be part of this. It's the very same organization that he pays into that oversees all of the dairy farmers. And they're the ones that actually come up with the price points and the quotas for what they should and shouldn't be producing. So him saying that it was the government was not being completely transparent or honest. Oh, 365 days as a little boy, we grew up on a dairy farm, came from Europe, work, 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 and here we are, this is what's happening. Oh, by the way, only one country in the world here in Canada, there's not, a, not the United States, not Europe, where they dump thousands of liters when they're over. But we're not supposed to talk about this because I don't know, it's just one of those things. So although he is right that they are throwing away a lot of milk and it breaks my heart, honestly, one of the, my biggest pet peeves of just being a person in general is just how much food we waste on a daily basis as a culture in general. Um, it's, it's really sad actually to see how much food just gets tossed in the trash. To see that the dairy farmers are just dumping loads and loads of milk like an unfathomable amount of milk just gets poured down the drain just so they can make more money it's really disheartening because we know that there are so many people that could use that milk that it's kind of heartbreaking the one thing i don't like is that that dairy farmer came out and was making it seem as though the government was the ones regulating and making them because at the end of the day, that farmer and all of the other dairy farmers are making a very lucrative living off of the price point that they set themselves. They, they cannot, they, they're sick to their, Mr. Hugan, what are you doing? I says, well, at the end of the month, I have to dump all my milk. I'm supposed to keep it quiet. Take that to the bank. Yes, the government does have a part to play because they're the ones enforcing the rules that's set by the Ontario Dairy Association. However, the Ontario Dairy Association are the ones that are making the rules to begin with. They're the ones that are creating the price points and the quotas, and then the government has their overseeing bodies that enforce those rules. And what he didn't uh, acknowledge is that he himself plays a direct role in that dumping of the milk. He's not just an innocent person that was caught in some kind of government regulation. They are their own governing body, basically. Um, and they're overseen, obviously, by the government. But again, they're the ones setting the rules, setting the quotas, and setting the price points. Go down the drain. Nobody sees it. It's okay. But it's not okay. Y'all know that on my channel, I'm all about transparency. And even with the homesteading community, with the video we made that um, you know who they are, copyright struck our video, which should be back soon, by the way. We will go out on a limb to say that some people are just not being completely transparent with you. Especially when it comes to off-grid living, a lot of channels on YouTube are not being transparent with you because well, it just makes them money or it gets them headlines, it gets them popularity, whatever it is. People online don't have to be transparent with you. And so a lot of them aren't. And this 
story about the milk really brought it all into perspective for me because just because someone claims that the government is coming for them in some way doesn't necessarily make it 100% true because I know we're all suspect of the government, we should be, but it's not always as black and white as it seems. So that's why I want you guys to just be a little more vigilant in the things that you see online and who, you're, who you believe because at the end of the day, you don't know for sure who's telling you the truth. Usually all it takes is like 10 to 15 minutes of research to find out exactly what's happening here. Um, and that farmer was not being completely honest and I found that to be pretty disheartening because I thought, oh my goodness, um, you know, how horrible of a thing to happen only to find out that he's part of it too. That brings me right back to the off-grid video we made. Basically what we were trying to say is that there is a lack of transparency in the homesteading community in general. And there really, really is. And especially with off-grid living, it is a very, very um, time-consuming and it's a difficult way to live. Septic and water and electricity and all of that. Those are the main things that you need in any home. And if you're saying that I'm gonna take that upon myself to do it, you better make sure you have a pretty good system in place and that you know how to fix and mend the things when they need fixing and mending because that's the nature of off-grid. At the end of the day, we're watching it for information to see if this lifestyle is really attainable and if people are making it look really easy um, and really attainable then a lot of people are gonna buy that a lot of people are gonna believe it but when you go to actually implement it yourself or you find out how much the off-grid systems themselves are gonna cost out of pocket it's probably not even realistic and again a lot of the hard work the money and the time spent building and maintaining your off-grid system is usually what people are omitting in their videos. They're not showing you the thousands and thousands of dollars that they put into the systems. They're not showing you the hundreds of manual hours that they have to be out there in the cold, the snow, the storm, the wet, all different weather trying to fix, mend, or update their systems. They're definitely not gonna tell you all of the negatives of living off-grid because they're promoting the off-grid lifestyles. And a lot of people need to just do more research to find out exactly how much these things are going to cost and how much manual labor you're gonna have to put into these systems. And you know, how do these people acquire all of their equipment and all of their the property and build the house on the property. So they're not going to show you all the ne negative aspects of off-grid living because at the end of the day some people are trying to sell this lifestyle to you and even if they're not set trying to sell it to you they're trying to sell you the fact that they're living that lifestyle so that you will support them and i think that a lot of people are just being sold a complete pipe dream to go over the topics we covered today the milk farmers of ontario i mean that video was not all on the up and up second thing being off-grid living i recommend off-grid as like a vacation home that's off-grid or a little cabin that you have and you go take your vacations or your summer or you want to go ice fishing or something like that and you want to live in your little off-grid cabin that is this perfect way to use off-grid to me because if it's just like a cabin where you're gonna be there for a few months at a time, why hook up all of the systems to it? But if you're gonna live in the house, you're living there full time, you're, this is your actual home, in my opinion, being on-grid is a lot better, but some people are really good with off-grid systems and for those people, I applaud them, I really do. One of my favorite off-gridders is off-grid with Curtis, Curtis Stone. He was the urban farmer. I watched him way back years ago when he was the urban farming it's probably one of the first people i watched on youtube um, i really love his content love his channel love his property he's one of my favorite off-gridders somebody else that i really like that's an off-grid is uh bush radical he made a very good concise video talking pretty much about the same topics we were talking about and um so if you guys are interested check out bush radicals uh channel because he talks about you know how people aren't being completely transparent in the off-grid community and he's completely right and he basically touched on all of the topics that we touched on that people got so angry that we were because we called people out by name and when you're calling people out by name I understand that people do get hurt by that but I'm on YouTube to be as real and as transparent as possible and to bring you guys into my life to show you what I do on my homestead and if there's something on my mind that I think you guys really need to know or if I know a truth and um then I'll tell you guys, I have no problem being transparent and honest with you guys about what I think. And if I see other people that I don't believe are being as transparent or open or honest, 
I'm not afraid to voice my opinion on that. Oh, another person I really, really enjoy who made a video similar to our fake off-grid homesteaders actually came out before our video, but we didn't see it till way later. Um, and that's Gold Shaw Farm. If you're not uh, subscribed or if you haven't seen his video talking about the fear mongering and how people aren't being transparent in the off-grid homesteading community, Gold Shaw Farm also has a very good video about that as well. I really really love that video he did such a great job breaking everything down pretty much saying exactly what we were saying in our video his video actually came up before ours if you guys haven't seen it check it out but we're not the only people to talk about the fact that there are people in this community who are lying and who will mislead you and who will just they're just not being as transparent as possible they're not showing you the downfalls and they're not showing like for example i just put out a video talking about one of my goats dying and i'm being transparent about that some people will never talk about the animals on their farms dying because they just don't want to show you that you know there are failures that come with homesteading not everything is going to go go perfect and that there are tragedies there are pitfalls there are negative aspects to it and that despite your hardest efforts sometimes things just don't go as planned and i just wish everybody was as on the up and up as i was but at the end of the day people will do what they want to do and that's completely fine but again if i find that there's something that is just not sitting well with me i have no problem just being honest because that's what i want to do on my channel i, I don't want to be producing the exact same copycat videos like everybody else i want to make videos that are real authentic and true videos that i fully believe in and you know videos that i can come back five years from now and watch it and still be proud of it regardless of how much hate I get on it so <laughs> i'm gonna end this talk here guys let me know what you think about the milk thing about the off grid and about everything else i talked about in this video if you don't agree with me let me know any way but just don't be rude there's no need to be rude all right guys well i hope you enjoyed my video for today i know i talked and ranted for quite a bit but i just wanted to get that out there make sure to like comment and subscribe if it's your first time here thank you so much for joining me and i'll see you in the next one stay peaceful